welcome to another Pass HC exam question videos. While doing this video, I'll read 14 or 12 to 14 questions which come from the 2011 to 2001 exam papers, HC exam papers, past papers. So what I'll do, I'll read the actual questions. I'll read most of the parts except for the ones which maybe take a bit too much time. You get to read those for yourself. But I'll read the questions, give a five seconds pause video. Once you pause the video, attempt the questions. And then when you're ready, press play and I'll go over the actual answer itself. All right, so I'll read over the first two questions. We've got um, diagram illustrates immune response. We've got white blood cells, helper T cells, pathogens, and memory cells. This is a diagram here. Below is a list of statements, each describing a step in the immune response. One, antibodies are produced to mobilize the pathogens. B, so two, B cell is activated by a helper T cell. Three, helper T cells are activated by the white blood cells. Four, memory B cells is ready to respond to further infections. What is the correct sequence of events? These different types of sequences here. And the next question is, which of the following shows the correct sequence of steps in the interaction between T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes? And we've got these different types of steps here. So pause the video and attempt a question. Welcome back. Right, so they're both quite similar to the actual questions. The first one is C for this one. And the next one is A for this one. The reason why is what happens first is helper T cells are activated by white blood cells. These could be B lymphocytes, they could be T, uh, they could be macrophages, but they get activated. Then when the T cells are activated, what they do is they can activate the B cells. The B cells will produce antibodies, and then the antibodies after they've killed the infection, memory cells will be produced, and that's the last step. So that's why C is correct. And here, this is the reason why this is correct, is here we've got these T cells interacting with the pathogens presented by macrophages. In this case, the white blood cells are macrophages. So they've been activated. Then they activate, once they're activated, they can activate the T cells. Um, and then these T cells will activate more, so differentiate into more helper T cells. And then the more helper T cells can produce even more chemicals that will produce even more B and T cells. In this case, it says these helper T cells will activate a few chemicals, these are interleukins they will activate even more B cells. Right, so we go from T cells being activated by macrophages, these T cells then differentiate and change into helper T cells. The helper T cells then produce chemicals to um, activate B cells. And then B cells will produce antibodies and kill off the infection. Right, so A is correct in this one. Right, next four questions. Which of the type of cell destroys viral infected cells? B cells, killer cells, helper cells, cytotoxic T cells. This is a trick question. Right? It's going to be you're going to have to have two answers, or two possible answers. Which scientists improve the understanding of the immune response? George Beadle, Frank McFarlane, Robert Koch, or Walter Sutton? Why do organ transplant patients need anti-rejection medication? A, to minimize infection. B, to prevent T lymphocyte growth. C, to stimulate the interaction of B and T lymphocytes. Or D, to prevent the recipient's blood type changing and adopting the immune system of the donor. And last one, these ones, how do vaccines prevent disease? Vaccines stop antigens triggering an immune response. Vaccines stimulate the production of specific antibodies. Vaccines will inhibit the inflammation response in the body. Vaccines restrict the vector's ability to inhabit, inhibit a variety of environments. So when you're ready, pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The answer to this one I said is two, killer and cytotoxic. This was a paper, a question which I think got some criticism because it confused students, because there was two possible answers. But both of these are cells, T cells, that can actually kill. Helper T cells are the ones that activate, and B cells are the ones that kill through the use of antibodies. So the only ones who will actually destroy cells directly are the cytotoxic and kill T cells. B cells produce antibodies, and thereby destroy um, pathogens indirectly. Which scientists improved the understanding of the immune response? That was Mc Frank McFarlane. Which, what is, why do we need to have um, anti-rejection medication? This is to prevent T lymphocyte growth. And how do vaccines prevent disease? This is vaccines stimulate the production of specific antibodies, right? So this Frank McFarlane Burnett, he was a person who kind of um, discovered how these lymphocytes worked and the clonal selection theory. So remember Frank, Mac Frank McFarlane, and connect them to the immune response. There's a couple of questions generally about that. Um, we do have the anti-rejection medication. Remember, they, they inhibit the growth of T lymphocytes, specifically the cytotoxic ones, these ones here. So they prevent the growth of these ones, because otherwise the T lymphocytes will attack the actual 
transplanted tissue. How do vaccines prevent disease? These vaccines simulate production of specific antibodies, right? These specific antibodies will then destroy the infection. It's a secondary immune response. This was wrong because it, oh, sorry, the other one was wrong. They don't stop the antigen triggering the immune response. That's they will still trigger it, just be destroyed quicker. And the other ones are just false as well. Right, the next couple of questions. Um, which flow chart correctly shows the interaction between B and T lymphocytes during an immune response? A, infection, T cells recognize antigen as foreign, B cells stimulate and antibodies produced. B, infection, B cells recognize antigen as foreign, T cells stimulate and antibodies were produced. Or C, infection, T cells stimulate and antibodies produced, and B cells recognize antigen as foreign. Infection, B cells stimulate and antigen produced, and T cells recognize an anti antibody as foreign. Next one is why are polio vaccinations effective? They cause an inflammation response resulting in the production of antibodies that engulf the polio virus if it enters the body. They cause an immune response resulting in the production of cytotoxic killer T cells that remain in the blood attacking all viruses that enter the body. They cause an immune response resulting in the production of memory T B cells that provide a rapid response if they are infected by the polio virus. They cause an inflammation response resulting in the production of memory T cells that provide limited response if they are infected by the polio virus. And then 14, organ transplant patients are given drugs to minimize the rejection of transplanted organs. How do these drugs work? They inhibit the production of enzymes by transplanted organs that lead to its rejection. They suppress immune response, which recognize four molecules on the tra transplanted organs. They act as antibiotics so that bacteria are killed before causing infection in transplanted organs. They promote the, the repair of the blood vessels connection between the transplanted organ and the host of the body. So when you already pause the video, and attempt the question. Welcome back. So in this case, the actual correct one is A. The reason why is because when there's an infection, often it's the T cells that will recognize the antigens. In this case, it will be the helper T cell. It can also be the B cell, but I'll show you why this one is incorrect in a second. And then the B cells, they stimulate the, the, the antibodies that are produced. The B cells are responsible for antibody production. The reason why this was wrong, even though this step is possible, it's theoretically possible, this is wrong. T cells do not stimulate the antibodies being produced. T cells are cytotoxic, they kill cells directly. The B cells are antibodies that are pr producing cells. And C and D are also just generally wrong. It's not how it works. Why are polio vaccinations effective? Because they cause an immune response in the production in the production of memory cells that provide a rapid response if they're infected by the polyvirus. Remember, this was the secondary immune response. Once the infection comes back, we've got the actual vaccination um, having caused the first immune response, which means now it's they're immune. So that means these memory B cells will stimulate a secondary immune response whenever something comes. That means it's quickly killed off. So all the other ones are wrong. And then we've got why do we do this? Again, it's mentioned from the last couple of dot points back or um, a couple of questions back. They suppress the immune response with, which recognize foreign molecules on the transplanted organs. These foreign molecules were the antigens. So because these t cytotoxic T cells are not active anymore, then this doesn't work and it's basically uh, not rejected. Next, for last four questions, how does the immunization against diseases such as diphtheria and polio limit the spread of these infectious diseases? A. Immunization kills the relevant pathogens. Immunization suppresses or reduces the immune response and associated inflammation. C. Immunization strengthens first-line defense barriers and prevents the entry of relevant pathogens into our body. D. Immunization reduces the multiplication of the relevant pathogens in the immun immunized hosts, and this reduces the chance of other people becoming infected. 13. What is a possible immune response to a pathogen? T lymphocytes produce antibodies. T helper lymphocytes are activated. B lymphocytes produce antigens. B lymphocytes, phagocytes, pathogen. Next one is, what is the McFarlane Burnett's major contribution to science? Better understanding of the immune response, identification of the complementary basis in DNA, proposal of the one gene, one protein hypothesis, identification of the importance of chromosomes. And last one, what is the function of helper T cells? Initiation of inflammation, phagocytes, ptosis of bacteria and viruses, promotion of B cells and T cell activity, and, or the production of specific antibodies against pathogens. Right, so we're ready to pause the video and attempt the questions.
Welcome back. All right, so first one, 14, was D. What is possible immune response to pathogen that is help T help our cells are activated? T lymphocytes don't produce antibodies, that's B cells. B lymphocytes produce antigens. No, antigens are never produced. They just um, act a thought against and they fight against them. Not, they don't activate them or they don't produce them. And B lymphocytes, phagocytes, toses the pathogen. That's your phagocytes, not your lymphocytes. So your B lymphocytes. And then what was McFarlane's contribution to science? Remember, that was a better understanding of immune response. What was the function of T helper cells? That was, we have the promotion of B and T cell activity by producing these chemicals that will activate your actual B and T cells. Right? The reason why this one was, was correct is because immunization reduces the multiplication of relevant pathogens and does so by actually having these memory cells. So the memory cells means the, the pathogen will still come in but once the pathogen enters the body, memory cells will be activated, which means then all of the B cells will be activated, and it will quickly fight off the pathogen before it can multiply to any big level. Right? So it doesn't the B cells don't directly kill the relevant pathogens, but what they do is they quickly make sure that pathogen can't multiply by then activating the B cells, which will kill off any pathogens before they can multiply directly. But they won't directly kill it, as A would suggest. And when we said that McFarlane, that was his understanding immune response, we had that question beforehand already. And the function of T cells is to activate B and T cells. I hope that was useful.